welcome to the introduction of my signature course titled, Don't Manage Your Own Deal. I encourage you to use the time spent on this program as an investment towards your professional career and in your personal life. Hopefully, it is your goal to gain insight to accurately evaluate your current position in life today, working to discover an understanding as to why you are where you are today, the people we surround ourselves with, and how we think about our everyday situation influences us in ways we know and, unfortunately, in ways we may not even be aware of. In order for this program to have the greatest influence as to its intended design, challenge yourself to become more independent and, at the same time, understand how important it is to respectfully align the people you choose to have in your life as a representation of who is in your corner, which you'll learn more about shortly. Another way to view this is to reinforce the boundaries that you set in place which are derived from your internal value system. Your values should not be compromised because certain individuals try to guilt or manipulate you in ways that negatively influence your life and bring out the negative energy in you. Your goal is to begin in the right direction. Start with self-respect. As this is strengthened through the choices and decisions we make, especially when no one's looking. This mindset will yield the confidence and a healthy degree of humility to seek out qualified people with positive and healthy intentions that will guide you through your next stages in life. These stages hyperlink to your professional and personal desires in a way that will hopefully leave you feeling a sense of gratitude and aspiration towards future progress. Cautiously, don't lose sight on the degree of arrogance that can eventually seep in because of your accomplishments. When you feel a sense of jealousy around another's accomplishments or envy of their possessions, it's typically because we feel entitled to have it as well. Prior to defining this course, please understand how important it is to open your mind and heart to these key principles and their intended meaning. Your past experiences that lead us to becoming judgmental can dilute the opportunity that will reveal itself throughout your future endeavors. Creating this open space will generate the platform needed for you to carry the weight of your next opportunity. This course is entitled, Don't Manage Your Own Deal. The traditional definition of the word deal is a business transaction or an arrangement for mutual advantage with two or more parties involved. A deal can be a vehicle sale, a real estate purchase, a pitch to your boss, a professional or personal goal, or just becoming more familiar with a new skill. The idea of don't manage your own deal is about not taking matters into your own hands, which often causes more problems and obstacles along the way. Rather, don't manage your own deal helps you discover the unknowns through the people you have carefully selected in your corner. These people enrich the opportunity before you in a way that provides the confidence you need to make better decisions in all aspects of your life. In short, don't manage your own deal means don't make decisions without support. Don't manage what you can't see. And don't allow your arrogance, ignorance, or ego to motivate your decisions. As you become more familiar with this program, you'll better understand the importance of this philosophy. There are multiple core components to don't manage your own deal. To begin with, there is a band of humility where you begin to pursue the quest of self-understanding and understanding of all the complexities involved with your next decision or deal. This emotional band of humility should cause you to slow down and understand how to build and enrich the connections with each member of your team. I have come up with 18 universal guiding principles that can be used to keep your perspective intact. These principles will allow you to gain the self-gratification of accomplishing what you are set out to do, in addition to the monetary reward you desire. So if we begin with who's in your corner and the band of humility on the reverse side of your culture card, 
we could begin to sculpt a model that is tailor-made in a way that independently serves you moving forward. I'd like to begin with an exercise to illustrate the concept of don't manage your own deal. Take a moment and imagine that you're standing in the center of a room. And as you're standing in this room, you cannot move your head, your body, just your eyes. You can move your eyes up and down and all around. And as you do this, I want you to begin to look around and share with yourself how much of the room as a percentage you can clearly see. Most people that I've interviewed feel they can see 50%. Some feel they can see 80%. Now, I want you to take a moment and write down the percentage that you think you can see clearly. As you're writing down the answer, please keep in mind the key word is how much you can see clearly. The answer is no more than 30%. Just because you can see something through your peripherals doesn't mean that you can clearly see it. Oftentimes, the amount of info we have is limited in scope in relation to what is available. Many times, we make decisions with this limited scope, which may cause us to fail and resign to the idea of never trying again. Just because you don't see the full opportunity doesn't mean the opportunity does not exist. The idea of don't manage your own deal is where we can rely on people we carefully select to be your eyes and ears in ways we cannot see ourselves. Together, through the efforts of your humble mindset and this program, we can cultivate a platform that will encourage you and give you the comfort to rely on the people with the greatest expertise as it links to what it is you are trying to accomplish. We must learn to become more patient and understanding with ourselves, and more importantly, not to become defensive when someone brings us an idea that seems totally foreign or makes us feel awkward. Please do not make the decision to reject what may be unfamiliar to you. Instead, embrace the ideas. They will help you fuel your future, self-development, and progression. Take into consideration who is in your corner. First, what are their credentials? What are their life experiences? What is their level of education and intellect? How can your knowledge of these factors help you attain your goal? What are their motives? What are their deepest fears of envy that lead to resentment? Or admiration, which will cause them to assist you and lead you to success. As you begin to carefully select the people you want in your corner, I also want you to take into consideration what's distracting you from yesterday. What are the decisions you've made in the past and how are they affecting your future? This humble path, as we refer to as the band of humility, is a disciplined approach towards that mainstream. This will reduce the imaginative, grandiose mindset that inevitably leads to failure and despair. When we are presented with an opportunity and set out to accomplish that new goal, we must maintain our composure and resist the urge to impulsively react to our desires and respond calmly and rationally. Our desires can sometimes be so compelling and obsessive that we create a grandiose mindset within ourselves. This causes us to act impulsively, to ignore or become oblivious to the red flags that serve as warning signs. This mainstream acts as a mental guardrail preventing you from going off course. We must be mindful to recognize the red flags as they arise. Confidence is learned through disciplined practice in maintaining the balance of staying the course of the mainstream. If we do not live our lives on the band of humility, we can overplay our hand and enter the grandiose mindset, big shot mentality, or become a charlatan. A charlatan is a person who proclaims that they can do and become more than they actually can. This false sense of identity becomes their perceived reality. When we fall off the band of humility, we will eventually fall into the pits of despair, a place where we begin to transfer blame, proclaiming it's not fair. And in the end, our reputation becomes discreditable. Imagination number one. Challenge yourself to independently stimulate your creative inner dialogue. 
This is a place where you begin to challenge the words you tell yourself on a daily basis. Take a moment to begin to feed your mindset new and positive information. Where you may find yourself falling into a negative zone of, I can't do it, or it can't be done, begin to ask yourself, how can it be done? Or, how can I accomplish this myself with the support of the people that I selected to be in my corner? Imagination number two. Challenge your confidence to overcome obstacles and avoid resting on your laurels. This is a zone I encourage you to enter. Stretch your experiences of success into a place of ever-increasing growth and opportunity that you have not yet experienced. Ask yourself and the people you've selected in your corner, what can I do differently to do more and make a greater impact on top of what I have already become? Imagination number three. Explore external sources to generate ideas that create innovative solutions. When you leave your house in the morning and make your journey for the day, whether you stop at a coffee shop, engage with a colleague, or meet somebody new, use these experiences as an opportunity to expand your horizon in a way that gives you the confidence in your ability to ask, what can I learn from this engagement? It will, in a most unusual and rewarding way, expand your imagination. Imagination number four. Allow your dreams and passion to create a vision that simultaneously drives our mission and your professional progress. At times, it may be difficult to experience success due to the responsibilities attached to the higher levels of success. Focus on how emotionally gratifying it will be and how rewarding the accomplishments will be for the people in your life who matter most. By doing this, you are prioritizing future gratitude towards your accomplishments in a way that will foster the courage and power needed to trudge through these uncharted zones. Imagination number five. Respectfully challenge your teammates to walk on the edge of discomfort as you provide the moral support they need in order to grow. When you are presented with an opportunity to assist your teammates to be included in something they may not have been a part of before, challenge them to discover a path that creates an opportunity for advancement, especially if they seem timid or afraid. Just as you need the support and direction of other people in your corner, Use this as an opportunity to ask yourself how you can be a support for someone else. Ask yourself, how can I serve the person I'm representing without expecting a favor in return? Imagination number six. Fear derived only from our imagination is an inevitable distraction. Allow your courage to convert the power derived from fear into your next greatest accomplishment. If you think back to your past experiences in life, you'll come to realize it's impossible, literally impossible, for you to be afraid of something that has already happened. Any and all of our fears, whether based around health, rejection, or a failure of a personal or professional endeavor, is built upon an internal conflict, how will I feel and or how will others view me if I fail? The greater the fear and the intensity it's built around the fear, the more important this accomplishment is to your future. The greater the fear, the greater the reward. Allow this fear to be a beacon and driving force to what you wish to become. And always remember, no matter what, to never give up. Values number one, practicing generosity, honor, self-respect, and the respect of others begins with daily reflection in the mirror. Take a look at the people you have interacted with over the past week. Some of these people you treated kindly, and at the very least, some, well, not as kindly. When you treat these people less kind, take a moment to reflect while you are standing in front of the mirror and ask yourself, what's going on with me? And do I have the courage and confidence to take the higher road and look towards being a kinder and more respectful person? Values number two. Take responsibility for your position and with accountability, 
do not transfer blame. A degree of humility must be present in order to accurately self-reflect and understand your contribution to the team dynamic. Your contribution is a great responsibility, as no one person in this world can make an entire system work. We all play a part on this team, whether we are a part of an organization or within a family system. When we make this commitment, it is only within the degree of responsibility we take and understanding of our position. We must take accountability for the part we play. By understanding our position and responsibilities, do not transfer blame to others. Values number three. The three R's of doing the right thing for the right reason, the right way must be a part of every decision you make as they affect your reputation that is now a part of ours. Your reputation is a combination of what you say, how you behave, and your follow-through towards the people you engage with on a professional and personal level. Most of us have been blessed with wonderful grandparents. When you think about your grandmother or grandfather and how you treat them, and more importantly, how they would want you to treat yourself, do you live up to these standards? If the answer is no, and in most cases, the answer is no, now is a time to begin doing the right thing for the right reason, the right way, especially when no one is looking. Values number four. Effective communication first requires a thorough understanding of others through the art of empathetic listening. Think about your last conversation. As the person was beginning to describe or explain what was on their mind, could you help yourself from wanting to interrupt or chime in with your thought or feeling prior to them having the opportunity to complete their thought? Empathetic listening requires a clean slate and a humble place of understanding, a place where you can truly connect with another person whether you agree or disagree with their idea. Take this time in your life as an opportunity to connect and build on your existing relationships. And use this experience gained from this time to enrich new relationships moving forward. When people begin to share their ideas, they are putting themselves in a vulnerable place. It is our responsibility to be respectful and protect the way they feel so we can build on their confidence rather than reducing it. Values number five. Have the self-respect to accurately listen to the issue and respond rather than react. Imagine going to a physician because you have a small rash on your hand. You visit the doctor and he prescribes you a cream to apply to this rash. After applying the cream, you experience an outbreak on your entire arm. You phone your physician and explain what has happened. He apologizes with great sorrow as he explains the reaction you are having as a result of the medication. He then prescribes you a new prescription and asks you to call them back in two days. After the two days, you notice the rash has disappeared. So you report these results to your doctor, to which he sighs with relief that the medication has responded. The idea here is that when we react to a situation, we can make it worse. When we respond with thought, We make the situation better. Values number six. When faced with a dilemma, consider what are you trying to accomplish and what do you stand to gain? Understanding that it is more valuable to solve an issue than to be right. Often, we can enter into an arrogant zone of pride. How dare this person or situation tell me what I need to do? I'll show them. The idea here is to take a deep breath, take a step back, and ask, What's really going on here? How can I climb into this humble zone and focus more on solving the issue, even if I have to take a step back for a moment and learn more about whether I'm right or wrong? Because solving an issue and bringing peace is more valuable to the situation than being stubborn. Focus on doing what's right, not being right, and this will yield greater harmony to all parties involved. Experience the value that money just can't buy derives from a vision beyond a paycheck. The ingredients we just described in these 18 components and three triangular dynamics between imagination, values, and efficiency, when practiced through a deep understanding and a degree of humility, will allow you to experience emotional gratification of a vision beyond a paycheck and what it actually means.
As we describe a vision beyond a paycheck, please understand it's not a vision in the absence of a paycheck. The goal of this program is to prepare you to earn more than you've ever dreamed of and simultaneously feel emotionally gratified through your accomplishments. This goal comes through the joint effort of what drives your hope and the support of your team. By learning and living these 18 components along with building relations with those in your corner, you can and will produce any result you imagine. The question is, do you believe it? Efficiency number one. An organic alignment must exist between our inner spirit, the effect we have on others, and proper timing as it relates to environmental conditions. It's important for us to always remain in the band of humility, respecting the power of environmental conditions, whether economic, religious, political, or any other environment imaginable. The way we connect with the environment depends on whether we accept or reject it. Accepting the environment we find ourselves in allows us to explore and become more organically aligned with others. Efficiency number two. Exercising a disciplined approach towards learning through the mindset and emotional state of humility will expand our opportunities. Becoming humble requires an understanding. We must become more disciplined on staying focused in our centered zone as the band of humility produces a mindset that allows us to see the greater opportunity. Our opportunities are not always obvious or connected to one another, yet, if we take these opportunities to be patient and understand, over time, we can customize our strategies in a way that bring us our desired results. Efficiency number three, relying on instinct only around decisions that cannot be reversed leads to inefficiencies and an erosion of self-confidence. When we look at our past experiences and begin to prejudge a situation or a person, we are relying on instinct. Our instincts then cause us to make decisions prematurely and perhaps inaccurately. As we make these premature decisions, we find ourselves in a less favorable place where we begin to second-guess ourselves, which eventually erodes our self-confidence. Self-confidence is something that we must protect. In order to protect it, we have to become very slow to make decisions, slow to make judgments, slow to take action, and most importantly, very slow to understand all the moving pieces that connect to what it is we are trying to accomplish. Efficiency number four. The discipline of studying and understanding the ever-changing market conditions will give us the agility to satisfy our customers. We have a moral obligation to ourselves as it relates to our profession to become the very best we can become. As we work at becoming a highly proficient professional in our industry of choice, it's important to take the initiative on our own to seek out the best practices that are available to us. Whether we decide to explore the internet, trade publications, or attend industry training events to better further our understanding of how other professionals see the industry we are in, please take the time to work on protecting our organization's greatest assets. The greatest asset in the end is you. Efficiency number five. Through collaborative effort, we efficiently bring our initiatives to life by respecting the credentials that make up each member of our team. Having the confidence and humility to understand that other people are able to perform their duties in a way that are equal or greater than your own ability is an important trait to develop when connecting with people you work with. Oftentimes, we are not comfortable when somebody else is more professional or more experienced in a job than we are. What's holding you back from letting them take the initiative to help you become more effective or allow them the opportunity to make a greater impact to the cause so that the entire operation and all teammates can succeed? Efficiency number six. As we continue to evolve, we must keep in mind that the only two motivators are hope for gain and fear of loss. Understanding the dichotomy between gain and loss is a matter of self-reflection. This driver of hope for gain and fear of loss is something that is independent to you as an individual. There may be overlapping qualities between you and your teammates, but in the end, how you see what's important to you versus what's not important to you is something that's extremely personal, created from your value system. 
Recognizing these two driving forces is important to understand in its entirety. By doing so, you will understand the tension and energy, and more importantly, the extreme power that exists between these two places of loss and gain. When you can understand that energy and power between this loss and gain, we can begin to leverage fear as our greatest asset. So often we believe that what we could gain is a greater motivation than what we could fear. But the truth is, fear is the greater motivator of the two. For example, if you fear that you'll lose your job, you'll find yourself working more diligently at it than if your boss gave you a bonus or raise for performing the same task. So when you look at your opportunities, think about what you stand to lose and what you stand to gain. Measuring why what you stand to lose is so important to you. Protect yourself against these losses by consulting with the members of your team and the people you have in your corner. Because an imagined loss is one thing, but experiencing a loss can be tragic and may be preventable. As this philosophy of don't manage your own deal begins to spark your curiosity, we dive into three influential concepts of imagination, value, and efficiency. These concepts will deliver you the emotional gratification of a vision beyond the paycheck. There are 18 components that reinforce the triangular relationship between imagination, values, and efficiency. These components create your vision beyond a paycheck. Upon reviewing and reflecting this material, evaluate your attitude. Your attitude determines whether you can or cannot accomplish your heart's desire. We introduced envy, jealousy, arrogance, and finger-pointing as signals within your life to examine. When we experience these feelings, it's a clear indication of what we wish we had or what we wish we could accomplish. However, for some reason or another, we have not yet developed the attitude or skill set to experience these accomplishments. We must take a close, hard look at who we are. When we lie to the person in the mirror as to what we really want out of life, we cheat ourselves and others on our team. Begin to explore with flexibility the route we should take to be true to the person in the mirror and have the courage to continuously improve. The ingredients of success do exist. How we connect these ingredients is entirely up to us. Please find it within yourself because you deserve it. The question is, once again, do you believe it?